All right, who is excited to chat about Secrets 1 from Gentle and Classical today? Let me know down in the comments below if you are thinking about using this program in the future and feel free to chat about your plans with me. Hi, I am Rachel from 7 and All. I love to make nerdy homeschool videos and this is another one of those. I'm going to be walking you through the Sequence 1 curriculum from Gentle and Classical. This is a year-long plan that could be used roughly at around first grade level, second grade level is what it's designed for and it is designed to integrate with other programs from Gentle and Classical, which I'll talk about that. You can download the entire teacher's guide for sequence one at the website, at the Gentle and Classical website um, for free, the PDF version, you can get it for free. So I highly recommend that you download that that you read the front matter to really, really understand this curriculum. Every Gentle and Classical program has a meaty teacher's guide with a lot of information in the first, you know, 40 pages or so in the front. So I highly recommend downloading the teacher's guide and reading that. And if you become hooked and if you become excited about this curriculum, then you can end up purchasing the whole bundle. I will walk you through what's included in the bundle today. I'm going to be talking about my plans for using this with my own son and kind of some real life adaptations we're making, some thoughts on how we're going to do things and maybe adapt some things as a bilingual family a little bit. So let's get started. <laughs> All right, so the way I'm going to do this is I'm just going to kind of talk through each different subject area that's included. And so each unit, this program has 36 units. So each unit, if you're going to do this over one school year, you'd be doing one unit over one week, which seems pretty reasonable to me based on what's included. Um, but it is definitely rich. This is not going to be a skimpy education for first grade. There's a lot in here and you're probably going to end up picking and choosing a little bit of what you want to do. First of all, you this is designed that you can include morning virtues or morning classics incorporated in this and you would choose. These are a separate product produced by Gentle and Classical and you're supposed to choose one issue of morning virtues or morning classics and you work through that issue for six weeks or six units. So the parts that you get from that is your read aloud, a hymn that your children are learning, affirmation, manners and hygiene. These are memory statements. You have an artist study and a composer study. So you're studying one artist and one musical composer for those six weeks. You're also learning a folk song and you have a scripture memory passage. So you're getting all of these parts from that morning virtues issue. You, of course, can decide whether you want to integrate this. Maybe you already kind of have uh, your own routine down with hymns and artist composer. This is often called like the riches in this type of education. You might have something else that you use for this, or you might opt to use Morning Virtues. I have purchased several issues of Morning Virtues, and I am planning to use them alongside this. I will show those to you in a future video. Then for science, if you want to, um, incorporate science, you can be using Gentle and Classical Nature, whichever volume you choose. Currently volumes one and two are available. I'm right now thinking that we won't be using Gentle and Classical Nature alongside this because we've already done volumes one and two. Um, we love them. We really got into them. I have videos on both of those programs, um, but I don't, I, I think that'll be kind of too soon. I feel like my kids already know pretty much all of the stuff I really wanted them to know from those programs. So um, I think we'll probably not be using that and we'll probably be using Sunlight Science instead. Uh, but you can opt to use Gentle and Classical Nature or the science of your choosing. Then this is the Bible section. And for the Bible section, you have a simple catechism question and a short reading from the book, Theology. If you used um, Gentle and Classical Primer, you'll be familiar with Theology. Um, this book is used in Gentle and Classical Primer and then it's continued in this level. So um, then you also have your memory statement cards for each catechism question, which memory statement cards are a big part of Gentle and Classical. There's something we have, my boys have really thrived with the memory statement cards 
This has been a big part of their education. They love these. And then you're reading typically about four Bible stories a week. And they schedule the Alfred Rex Bible Storybook. I haven't been able to get this yet. I still think I will try to get this before um, it comes time for first grade and time for us to use this. But if I don't, and if you don't get that specific storybook, you can, of course, read whatever Bible storybook is um, that your family prefers. If I don't end up being able to get this one, I might do Eggermeyer's Bible storybook because that is kind of, it's a, still a Bible storybook, but it is a longer, more challenging one than some of the younger Bible stories we've read. So I'm just suggesting that as an option if you aren't able to get your hands on that one. Then you have some short literature reading scheduled for each week. You have one story from this book, 50 Famous Stories Retold, and this is in the public domain, so it is available on Gutenberg, but I opted to get it in a book form because I just know me, and I'm much more likely to actually read it <laughs> if it's in a book form, a hardcover or, you know, a hard book, like one I can hold and page through. And you can see that these are really, really short stories. So it's going to be a very short couple minute reading. And then you also have a fable that you're reading each week. There's two different fables books. One is by um, Lobel, and it's kind of a less traditional fables, I would say. And the other one is a volume of Aesop's fables. You read one of those each week. Then once every six weeks, so it's not included in this week, but once every six weeks, you're also reading a folk tale. So she only includes six folk tales for this year. And Paul Bunyan is one of them. And she includes picture book suggestions for the folk tales. Fun one. I grew up kind of in Paul Bunyan country. So that, that'll be a fun one that I look up, look forward to. I've seen Paul Bunyan and his blue ox babe statues growing up. Um, I kind of want to include a few more folk tales in our year, and I wanted to include more Spanish. So one way I'm thinking to do folk tales more frequently is we can also work through this book, Cuentos que contaban nuestras abuelas, which this book is available in English. If you're looking for folk tales of Latin American or Spanish origin, I think these are mainly Latin American, but I do think that there were some from Spain. But you can see there's quite a number and these are very short. They have a few illustrations in the book. It's not constant, not every page, but these are short and I think will be a good level for my kids by the time we're in, by the time my oldest is in first grade. Next, there is a language portion of the program here. Um, so we have grammar, spelling, sight word, spelling list. There are memory statement cards for the grammar, spelling rules, sight words, and they get it all onto one card here. I do really like the, that the illustrations make it very visual, a person, place, or thing. We have examples of common nouns, examples of common nouns for people, common nouns for places. Um, they do recommend the first language lessons program in this guide. And if you're familiar with first language lessons, you'll notice that these type of statements um, line up pretty closely to what you're learning about in first language lessons as you progress through that curriculum. Um, the spelling words do get a little more challenging than this throughout the year, but they are not very challenging. Um, depending on your child, like the, this is why it's going to be one of those things where I feel like it will depend on your child whether this spelling will be kind of at the level that they're at, just because kids can vary so much. For my son right now, when I've looked ahead at what the year looks like. I'm thinking by the time he's in first grade that the spelling will be a little on the easy side for him. But one way I'm thinking to bring up the challenge is, okay, do this. Let's keep our English spelling easy, but maybe I'll also come up with lists of English, I mean, sorry, Spanish spelling words and add five Spanish spelling words to his week, each week. That's one of the options that I'm thinking of right now to just add a little bit of challenge and add a little bit of our bilingual practice. Spelling isn't as big of a deal in Spanish as in English just because English is so complicated, but little kids still need to learn how to spell no matter what the language and spelling can help you just become more familiar with the words and vocabulary. So um, that's something I'm still kind of thinking through, planning what I will do. And one thing I don't have printed out is that the program does include printed out cards 
for the spelling list so you can have a card with your spelling list each week and with your sight words of the week. The next element is U.S. Geography here. So for U.S. Geography, you also have memory statement cards. Here's unit ones. So I like this that they have the whole map on here and then they point out what states you're learning about and what capitals you're learning this particular week. So that's kind of cool to be able to place the state somewhere inside the US, find it on a map. They also recommend that you use a particular book called The 50 States for getting information on your state for your notebooking, which I'll show you the student notebook in a bit. I don't actually own that book. I already own this book. Let's see if I can fit it in the frame. I already own this book which I'm not sure if it's gonna have all the same kind of information, but I feel like probably between the book I already own and the internet, we can figure it out. So right now I don't think I'll buy a different book. I'll just use what I have because that's what we do as homeschoolers, make things work. Then another uh, gentle and classical program that is incorporated is the On Mission issues, which On Mission is a kind of magazine that also incorporates a student notebook and some extra activities um, that focuses on one country. So you can choose which country. And you're going through On Mission, but you go through one country, one On Mission issue for 12 weeks, 12 units of this curriculum. So it's only three in a year. So um, I do think when you think about the morning virtues or when you think about the On Mission and you feel like, this sounds like a lot. Um, do keep in mind, like this is for 12 weeks and the morning virtues are for six weeks of school. That's actually a fairly good chunk of time. So I have purchased a few on missions issues and I can show those to you in a future video. By the way, I am an affiliate for Gentle and Classical and I will leave a link to the new Sequence One bundle down below so that you can check it out. I always appreciate it when you guys are willing to use my links and support my channel and my family that way. Uh, and then for the history, because this really is a history, history, geography, strong program. You have a memory statement for history. So I'll just quick show you a few of the memory statement cards right here. One thing I really like about these is that they didn't use like watercolor modern illustrations. They used these um, images that are much more in keeping with the times. This one did not print out very well because I was having some problems with my printer. Um, but that's an example of what you're getting on your uh, memory statement card for history. So you have your memory statement and you're typically working on this memory statement for two units, two weeks. So don't worry, don't get overwhelmed. It's not a new one every single week. You work on it for two weeks and you have a picture book recommended that you read in association with whatever you're learning about in that memory statement. You also have a year long read aloud, which is kind of, kind of history and kind of geography related called The Tree and the Trail. I'll just show you a couple of the picture books that I have. I did not follow the, the recommended book list exactly because sometimes I used, I found books that were in my mom's collection already on the same topic or the same person. Sometimes I just found one that's like, oh, I had already had this other book on my wish list. So I don't have like exactly all the books, but I do have quite a few of the ones that they suggested, that Gentum Classical suggested. So the ones I'm showing you are ones from the list. If you'd like to see it in the future, like my full book plans for using this, I might do that, a video on that later on when we're closer to starting. Um, but this is an example. So these are not your like, quick reads, light and fluffy picture books. These are pretty meaty picture books. They are, they do get deep into history. This is one I'm really excited about. I'd heard of this book for a long time before I finally was able to buy it. Um, it's just a part of history that really fascinates me. Book creation back before there were printing presses. I'm so excited about this one. Oh, and this one has fold out pages. That's gonna be so cool. Um, these are longer picture books, so you get one for the week and you can very easily, you know, you could break it up into a couple readings and that's kind of your history. You do have also a history section in the student notebook, which I'll show you in a bit. Each unit follows that exact same pattern. So once you know how it works, you, you this is very reliable and consistent and you can just keep rolling with it. 
One thing I do wanna show you, you have the option, they're not part of the bundle, but I'll link them as well. You have the option of getting grids for sequence one. And then it will be a grid that looks like this for all 36 weeks that tells you, this is what you read each day, this is what you sing, this is, say your memory statements, do this for on mission, read the first half of this picture book this day and the second half this day. Some people love grids and some people hate grids. Now I lean toward the side of loving grids just because it, to me it does help to kind of map out how the week could come together, but I also don't at all feel bound to them. Um, I'm very much the kind of person who, if my kids want me to finish reading a book, even though I was only supposed to read a few pages, if we've got time, I might go ahead and finish reading that book. Or I'm very happy to switch days if it just makes more sense for us. So I like grids. I am also the kind of person who's pretty flexible with grids, but I find them helpful. Now let's look at the student notebook, which is a really big part of the program. If you're just looking at the teacher's guide, you might be wondering, hmm, is this really gonna be enough to communicate all of this info? How do I implement this? The student notebook is a big part of that. So first you have your pages that can be completed maybe every day or maybe you just opt to do it three days a week. Um, but these ones, if you are getting this printed from Gentle and Classical, they will come already laminated. These, reg these repeatable pages will come already laminated so you can, I don't know if it's exactly called lamination, some kind of coating so that you can write on them and erase on them with a dry erase marker. If you do not get it printed, if you get it digital, then I would recommend just putting these in one of those very small little folders in one, of, in one of those really skinny folders that you can just put a handful of um, plastic page protectors in, slide them into page protectors, and it'll be really easy. So you can have the option to have your child write their name. For a first grader, it might be full name, emotions. You can have a habit of putting coins in a cup and having them add up how much money that creates. Then you have day of the week, month of the year, and practice writing down the date which will be easier for a first grader because they can reference up here how to spell the months of the year. Then day of the month, the tens house and the ones house, you can build the day of the month. These types of activities should be pretty familiar to you. If you've used the kindergarten binder from Gentle and Classical, you could choose to use all of the pages. You could choose to use not all of the pages. Like for example, this is a page that always is a part of morning binders that I probably wouldn't use just because we don't, we live in the tropics and the weather is never different. The temperature is never different. And my son's already really good at telling the time. So for me, this page wouldn't be so useful, but for other people it would. <laughs> then um, spelling words. So if you have that little sheet of five words, you can hand to them or set it up before them and they can practice copying it each week and maybe you can have them do things creatively, use different color markers or whatever. But practicing copying spelling words is that practical way um, to build it. Then here, say it, build it, write it with your sight words. So you could build it with letter tiles or just little letter manipulatives, however that works for you. And you also get um, opportunity to do some simple map work, find the states that you're learning about on the map and find the country that you're currently learning about in on mission on the map. So each of these pages is very quick and you can also opt to see how frequently you wanna do them throughout the, throughout the week, but they're there for you to do repeatedly and keep practicing those basic skills as needed. Then you have your notebooking pages for each state and these are just gonna be exactly the same for each state pretty much, but they have the state outline on them, which is pretty neat and location of the capital, and you get two pages per state. So here, and you can, if your child's not writing very well yet at the age that they start this, which they very well may not be, you can be doing scribing, you guys can be talking through and doing these together. It is a great option and definitely one I would recommend, especially with any kind of early learning. Do not really expect a whole lot of independence. It's a very communal experience between homeschool mama and the kid. Um, but you get to, so you can be filling this out based on information that you read in the book, or if you watch a little video on the state, however you do it, 
you fill out your notebook and you're gradually building a notebook of all the states and also U.S. territories are included as well toward the end of the year. Then you have your history pages and there's four pages for each um, history memory statement. So you finish those four pages over the course of two school weeks or two units, however long you're spending on it. The first page is always ideas to go beyond what was included in the teacher's guide. So there's extra book ideas or video ideas they have QR codes. They have a link on the website that you can go to for video ideas. They have a couple hands-on activities sometimes or discussion activity ideas. Um, so you can easily, easily beef it up. I think this is very easily going to be a very rich history experience considering the first to second grade age level. Um, this will be plenty, plenty to do and plenty to remember. Then you have a, the second page of the unit is there's always a lot of variety in those, so it's something different. Here you're getting some different routes uh, or different routes of different explorers, Magellan, Columbus, Vasco da Gama. Then you have copy work. So you trace it one day and then another day. If you're following the sequence one grid, you're scheduled to write it, and then the next week you're scheduled to write it one more time. And finally at the end, you have a narration page and this is where depending on where your child's at maybe you do the writing for them or maybe if they're toward the older age age <laughs> older end of the age range for sequence one maybe they do the writing but draw what what do they really want to remember what was important that they remember learning about this week after you've read these books or these two weeks after you've read these books and talked about um, these explorers or whatever the topic is so i'll show you the next unit here this one looks like it's getting into the reformation so here again we have variety there's it's always something different with this page this one we have a word bank we're filling in statements so if your child you wouldn't necessarily expect your child to be fluently reading this yet i definitely recommend um especially if your child's on the younger end that you'll be doing a lot of this student notebook together to, doing stuff together is a great way to learn <laughs> uh, and then again copy work and again, you have the notebooking page, and that is your student notebook. All right, I think I've walked you through pretty much all the parts of sequence one. I do plan to use this for my oldest son for his first grade year, which is not this coming year, it is the following year, but I started prepping early because it can take a while to get books here. <laughs> um, but I am very excited to use this. I think it'll be a really rich school year for him. I think we're really gonna enjoy doing it together. So let me know what you think. If you have any further questions or thoughts, uh, go ahead and let me know. I'll see you later. Bye.